At Belfort, Washington's largest furniture store, you always get a lot more for a lot less. And right now, during our huge President's Day celebration, get the look you want up to 50% off. It's not how much you spend, it's how much you get. You get a whole lot more at Belfort. So the first thing we wanted to do was to see if the film actually connected with the audience the way we wanted it to. And we went through a re-edit. Um, I actually got to be involved in shaping the soundtrack and doing some other things. I, I actually got to compose a couple of pieces that are in the soundtrack, which was kind of fun. I've never done that before. But uh, when we went through, we, we, we changed the script. We took out some of uh, the coarser elements of what had been left in. We shortened it at first by about 27 minutes, then we ended up taking another four minutes out. And at the end of the day, uh, what it is now is a very strong, compelling, condensed, very tightly told story of redemption and forgiveness. And it's really the story itself that <coughs> gave me a lot of passion for what it was. I, I really believe in, the, uh, in what Jesus has done in my life, uh, picking me up, cleaning me off, sometimes again and again. Um, and that's kind of what is told in the story through this kind of very compelling, um, edgy uh, narrative. Mm -hmm. So it's been fun. Loving the Bad Man is the story of a young girl who uh, believes authentically what the Bible says about what it means to be a Christian is true. Um, and I think, you know, to, to, to kind of make a radical statement right now, you know, the Bible says that at some point in this thing called Christianity, you know, people are going to have to literally make, make a choice between taking the mark of the beast or not. And there's going to be a whole lot of people that thought they were Christians that are going to take that mark, <clears throat> that are scared and fearful and, and, and uh, so on and so forth. So uh, I think what's awesome for me personally is I can so relate to that character because I'm a guy that spent 20 years in Hollywood and... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, the choice I've made about what I feel God's calling is on my life, which is to take the platform He gave me and now use it to glorify God, uh, has been costly. Um, but uh, for me, um, this character in the film, this young girl who has a horrible crime committed against her, decides that she's going to just by faith react a certain way that she believes is, is what God's calling her to do because it's just the right thing to do. Um, so in that regard, uh, it, it's just, it, it's, it, this film is grippingly powerful. This film is mind-bogglingly riveting, you know, and it's a little film. It's a, it's a small little indie, um, but at the end of every screening we've done so far, we have had people sitting in the room transformed by the film. Not necessarily in some kind of a salvation type way, but it's really well, made... Well, that has happened. Sure. No, no, but <clears throat> to the, correct, but to the point I'm making, to a lot of believers, this film call, forces them to take a look at where they're at mm -hmm. in their walk with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And for that, you know, uh, I'm just... I'm, just you know, almost overwhelmed that uh, that God would use loving the bad bad man as, as as a tool in that regard. I am a rape assault victim, and um, I was abducted almost 20 years ago when I was 16 years old uh, from a parking lot, and I'm a victim of rape. Um, made it out alive, and my abductors went on um, to prison, which is where they still are today. So this movie kind of hits home and with me and my story and a lot of similarities, which is why I'm here, and the subject of forgiveness, and which is basically how I've moved on, uh, able to forgive my attackers and move on with my life and what God has for me. So they asked me to be here, which I'm honored to be here and share my story. Good. Hey everybody, I'm Stephen Baldwin and you're watching Loudon Times.